Welcome to another episode of What is Hashimoto's with Dr. Martin Rutherford. To find out more on any of our topics or for information on scheduling a consultation with Dr. Rutherford, please visit us at whatishashimoto's.com. And now, here's Dr. Rutherford. Okay, so vitiligo and Hashimoto's. So vitiligo is uh, a, uh, a skin disease, it discolors. Those of you who are looking at this already know that. And uh, there's varying degrees of it. And, uh, uh, and, and I'm not sure if you're aware that it's pretty much accepted now. The studies are like largely, largely, largely pointing to the fact that it's an autoimmune problem, which we have supposed for quite some time because we treat autoimmune cases a lot. And although I haven't treated anywhere near as much vitiligo as other things, um, I've treated enough of it. And the, the question is, is vitiligo related to Hashimoto? So the answer is yes and no. And, and, and what that means is um, Hashimoto's doesn't cause, per se, vitiligo. You can, you can have vitiligo and not have Hashimoto's, but because of my practice being the way that it is, virtually every vitiligo patient that's ever come in here has had Hashimoto's and other autoimmune conditions. Um, this is probably a good moment to illuminate that very few people actually get one autoimmune problem. Um, I know myself, I have three active autoimmune problems for sure, potentially four, and I have one uh, um, antibody uh, against my pancreas that I don't think is a problem. And that may sound confusing to you, but there's a test that you can do to find out if you are diagnosed with, say, lupus, or you're diagnosed with vitiligo, you can do this test and see if you have antibodies to other tissues that if you keep triggering your vitiligo, you keep triggering your Hashimoto's, eventually you're gonna express other autoimmune problems if you already have the antibodies. So I, the one test I use is Cyrex-5, and it's, and it's Cyrex-5, C-Y-R-E-X-5, and they test all those antibodies. What's the value of that? The value is that is to find out if, you're, if, if you have those and you keep exacerbating your vitiligo, which we'll get back to in a second. And then all of a sudden you start getting all, all the symptoms, all these other weird symptoms, and you know that you have antibodies against your thyroid, and you go, oh my God, those are, I now have to, uh, those are Hashimoto symptoms. And I got Hashimoto's antibodies, now you know you've developed Hashimoto. So vitiligo, uh, and here's the other thing about Hashimoto. So I, I, as long as I've done this, I, I, I've seen a growing number of autoimmune conditions that are related to autoimmune thyroid disease, Hashimoto's. Um, and, and, Hash, and, and so I've seen a ton of people who have Hashimoto's and rheumatoid arthritis, Hashimoto's and pancreatitis, ha Hashimoto's, I'm sorry, Hashimoto's and diabetes type one, Hashimoto's and celiac, Hashimoto's and Crohn's disease, Hashimoto's and irritable or, uh, uh, ul ulcerative colitis, Hashimoto's and autoimmune gastritis. Um, even they're even saying Hashimoto's probably has something to do with um, polycystic ovarian syndrome, which isn't even necessarily a, 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 uh, um, an autoimmune disease. But I mention that because of the mechanism. And the mechanism is this. Your thyroid has receptor sites in every single cell of your body. And, um, and, and so I think because I think Hashimoto's has become so prevalent because the thyroid is so sensitive and it relates to everything else. And then if you, and, and it keeps getting beat up and beat up more than anything. You get stressed and beat up, your blood sugar goes up, it gets beat up, your blood sugar goes down, it gets beat up. You have a food sensitivity, it gets beat up. You have some smoke, I point outside because we had smoke here for, I'm in Reno, we had smoke here for only a week or two this year, as opposed to three months like last year. And all of those toxins, boom, boom, boom. And if, you're, and if your thyroid keeps getting attacked, then it's uber super sensitive more than anything else. It's gonna raise your immune responses more and more and more and more and more and more and more than these other things are going to because they're not as sensitive as your thyroid is, other things being like Sjogren's or lupus or vitiligo because they're not as sensitive. And then what happens is eventually, if you have other antibodies while you have Hashimoto's, which it's likely that you do, Okay, then eventually you're gonna keep hitting it. It's gonna keep flaring up, flaring up, flaring up, and eventually you're gonna to start to express that gene. 
boom, now you have vitiligo, or now you have autoimmune gastritis, or now you have something like that. And that's how I want to present it, because the, the vitiligo is, I've never had a case of vitiligo come in here for vitiligo. They've always come in here with rheumatoid arthritis and vitiligo, Hashimoto's and vitiligo. I have this and vitiligo, I have that and vitiligo. So, so from that perspective, <clears throat> they're connected in a sense that if you treated them, if, if I'm treating a case of vitiligo and, uh, and, and the person also has Hashimoto's, there's a series of triggers that would be uh, relevant to the vitiligo and other autoimmune conditions. And then there would be a series of triggers that are very specific to autoimmune thyroid disease. I would treat them both because if you're flaring up the autoimmune thyroid disease, you're flaring up the vitiligo. So that's the, that's the, most cl that's the clinical way of looking at this. I, we, like these, we like these answers of, yeah, it's, it's, it, yeah we, it's not like that. This is, this is what the genesis of, I think, functional medicine was, was to understand all of the vicious cycles, all the different organs, how they play, uh, organs, all the different metabolic systems, um, and how they play together to create a vulnerable, a vulnerable host, if you will, that could then react to these stimuli in a negative way, express poor gene function, and then the next thing you know, you have all these symptoms, you're going to the labs, everything's normal, and, 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 and so we, it was put together to be able to investigate those cases, understand them, and then and then be able to attack. And for vitiligo, vitiligo is kind of an outlier in a sense that um, it, it's not one that comes in a lot, but it is autoimmune. I have seen, I, and the, the ones I've seen, not all of them got better, but I have had uh, cases that have uh, improved, that have improved, where the, where the skin um, melatonin uh, factor apparently improved and, um, and, and and it would be because of what we did to dampen the immune system. In fact, what's the treatment for it? I, 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 the treatment for it is steroids. So what you would do is you would, you would treat it as, a, uh, uh, as an immune response. You would become that person's steroid by walking it through a functional medicine procedure and, and, then, um, and then watch and see how it responds. Thank you for joining us for another episode of What is Hashimoto's? To find out more on any of our topics or for information on scheduling a consultation with Dr. Rutherford, please visit us at whatishashimoto's.com.